Hello, I'm one of three learning officers at the National Library of Scotland, where we're fortunate enough to have preeminent collections of literary works written and published in Scots. We're fortunate, fortunate enough to have uh, a rich uh, selection of works uh, written and published in Scots, dating back hundreds of years, and I'm here to talk to you about a project that makes some of these items available digitally for the first time, a small sample which you saw there. The website was a result of collaboration with a first Scots Griever or Scots writer funded by Creative Scotland and appointed to create new work and raise the profile understanding and appreciation of the Scots language. This was some of the media coverage we had of the event to launch the post. We were inspired by the windows which Robert Burns had etched poems onto, like this one in Falkirk. We liked the idea of the collections. Um, people being able to look into the collections and back through time, and at the same time, the collections looking out onto the world. And that's how the name We Windies came about. We also um, wanted people to understand the role of Scots language in a wider cultural and historical context. So this section explains a bit more about that. And while the default language throughout the site is Scots, longer pages have English translations which lets users switch seamlessly between the two. And to showcase the geographic spread, we created this map which plots the text featured on the site to where they, were, where they were first written or published, creating a kind of mosaic from around Scotland to let people find things from, say, where their granny came from. And alongside finding texts by location, we designed three other ways to find them by period, which you can see in the timeline here, by type, such as song, poem, ballad, or scripture, or by themes such as love, war, superstition, and chivalry. So if you wanted to see all the items that have a love theme, you would get this visual mashup screen. So for example, on the top row, you get Philip as a 16th century play, next to Mary Simon, a 20th century poet, followed by an early 19th century ballad. A really nice mix, we think. And each windy also has a sample uh, audio clip of the sample text there. I'll play that for you now. Thus all their foulest, for my filth, as at me seed, that be I seen in their sicht, they look out on daylight, some will me dullfully dicht, some ding me to but what underpins the whole site are the digitized texts that are featured on each windy. For example, the Book of the Howlet, a 15th century allegorical poem dedicated to Lady Elizabeth Douglas at Darnaway Castle in northeast Scotland. And here we've digitized the slightly more legible 18th, 1823 edition. Alongside each window, we have a small gallery to showcase related material from our other collections, such as maps, manuscripts, and archive film, as well as links to specific items in our main catalog for anyone wanting to do further research. One of the star items is a map of Northeast Murray made sometime between 1583 and 1596 by Timothy Pont, a St. Andrews University graduate who took it upon himself to map the whole of Scotland, possibly not long after his graduation. Uh, so probably something not on anybody's bucket list today. <laughs> Another star item is this fragment of the Bannatyne manuscript compiled by merchant George Bannatyne while he escaped the plague in Edinburgh in 1568. It contains one of the greatest collections of Scottish medieval verse and is one of the library's treasures. And one of the benefits of the project was a chance to collaborate and add another layer of knowledge. The University of Edinburgh's Angus Macintosh Center for Historical Linguistics created this fabulous downloadable guide to help modern readers understand some of the spelling, handwriting, and pronunciation of Middle Scots. Some items have been made available for the first time. Ballads by Aberdeenshire singer Anna Gordon Brown, compiled by her own hand in 1800, and said to have been inspired by aunts, nurses, and old women. Women whose voices are now lost to time have been given a new lease of life on a 21st century platform. 
and Ain Godly Dream, a Calvinist dream vision poem written by Elizabeth Melville, Lady of Kilross in Fife, first published in 1603. She was the first woman in Scotland to see her work in print, and this title was so popular it was translated into English the following year. But it's not just rare books and manuscripts by aristocratic authors. We've also acknowledged the Scots oral tradition associated with marginalized communities, such as travelers, whose tales fortunately still survive in print, thanks to collectors like Hamish Henderson. And authors who wrote about the working class are also featured. We've digitized part of the typescript of Glasgow Keeley, A Tale of Hard Lives in Glasgow Slums, by John McNeely, published in 1940, sadly now out of print. But this was made available by the enthusiastic permission and support of his son. And to raise awareness of these rare and often out of, text, out of print texts to a new generation, we teamed up with Education Scotland to create downloadable and printable cross-curricular cross learning activities for teachers mapped to the Scottish curriculum and ready for use in the classroom. And we're extending the reach offline too. This year, we're collaborating the Finhorn Festival in Murray on a new production of the Book of the Howlet to be performed by the community in the Great Hall at Darnaway Castle, displaying facsimiles of the Bannatyne manuscript and taking the story full circle some 500 years after it was said to have been performed there. I hope that's given you a taste of our Scots language collections, which I've been delighted to share with you. Please have a browse through the site, follow us on Twitter, or if you'd like to know more about our work, get in touch. Thank you.